Hey, what's up everybody? Dave Shrine coming to you from nearly 100 degree Chandler, Arizona. I hope you've enjoyed the summit so far and I'm very excited to bring to you this session all about live streaming. There was a time uh, not too long ago where we would shudder at the idea of putting a video like this up on the internet. We would shudder at the idea of not having something that was, you know, professionally produced. And there's all sorts of resources out there. There's all sorts of tutorials and videos and amazing speakers and authority figures telling you how you can produce amazing professional video and what we're going to talk about in the live stream has nothing to do with replacing professional video but we're going to actually break down two things we're going to break down pro video and everyday video and I'm going to walk you through exactly how you can become a pro at everyday video and apply those lessons to live streaming and so you can live stream on behalf of your church, bring amazing content, bring um, the message of your church, the mission, the vision, the values, with very little prep work, with very little effort, and best of all, without feeling like you have to have professional everything. So I'm very excited to walk you through and make live streaming more accessible for your church. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this topic of live streaming for your church. How can you begin using live streaming right away? Before we dive all the way in, I wanna make sure that you know what we're gonna cover. Uh, we're gonna cover pro video versus everyday video. We're gonna cover the types of live stream video methods that you can use. Uh, we're gonna talk about how to succeed at everyday live streaming. I'm gonna give you ideas for how you can live stream at your church and I'm gonna give you a list of tools you can use to make it all happen. So my experience with live stream is that I joined Periscope on day one. Um, I have over 400 live stream broadcasts on Periscope, which wouldn't really say much because uh, anybody can have over 400 live stream broadcasts on anything, but I was able to develop a following of people who were interested in what I had to say, people who, um, as I like to say, dug my vibe, who enjoyed what it was I was putting out there. And so I've developed a pretty good following and I'm still broadcasting to this day. Periscope has changed a lot, especially with the introduction of live streaming on Facebook um, and making live streaming on YouTube a lot easier. But I'm still on Periscope. I'm still making great uh, connections, making great friends on Periscope. Uh, and it's a, it's a fantastic platform, especially if you want to do individual live streaming. I'm currently hosting three live stream shows for my business, Shrine Media. Uh, two of them are for clients. The first one is Ask Steve. And yes, you're reading that correctly. It is donkey and mule questions answered. Uh, the next one is Ask T. That's a live stream event that we do every single week and it's all about fitness and health. And the last one is the one that I do for my business, Shrine Media. It's called The Facts, Online Business Questions Answered. And constantly I'm getting questions from um, clients. I'm getting questions from people who have followed me on Periscope, in fact, saying, how do I do this? How do I do that? And so The Facts, Online Business Questions Answered is where we answer all of those questions. We use those questions as our main content driver for live streaming. So I wanna talk about first and foremost, pro video versus everyday video and discuss, discuss with you what the difference is and why this matters. Uh, pro video, as I already hinted in the intro, um, it, there is a place for it. And it's very easy to do when you have pro equipment, when you're working with pro talent, when you're working with a pro budget, when you have pro lighting, when you have a pro set, when you have pro production, pro editing tools, pro planning, and pro content. I think you're getting a theme here. Pro video is completely doable, but you have to have the right tools to make it happen. And again, we're not here to replace professional video. There is a place for that. And perhaps your church has mastered the art of creating professional video. And if you have, more power to you. But what this is about is making live stream accessible through everyday video, making it so that anybody can do it regardless of what hardware you have, regardless of what type of talent level you have, make live streaming available through what I call everyday video. So what is everyday video? Well, in order to achieve success in everyday video, all you need to have is good lighting, good framing, good audio, good content, good equipment, and then you can do it wherever you are and you can use whatever you have available. You see, there's just a few simple guidelines that you wanna follow, such as having decent lighting in order to achieve a decent everyday video. 
everybody can broadcast, everybody can live stream, which means the bar of quality has dropped so far. You're now producing, you know, broadcasts with the same tools that your grandma is using to produce a broadcast if your grandma's that hip. So, this is an example of what I mean by just having good lighting. To my left is natural lighting. I've got a window just coming in and it's natural lighting. On the right side, it's fluorescent lighting. But you can see everything's pretty much evenly lit. If you're in a very dark room, get out of there. Find a space that has good lighting. If you have a few lights that you can point on you, awesome. Don't feel like you need to go out and invest a few hundred dollars on a light kit. Just find a place you can broadcast that has good lighting where you're at. And then good framing. So you see right here, uh, down on the left side, you've got the Centered for Skype conversation. So if you were to watch this particular broadcast live, you would see that myself and Jordan, who works for me, we're both positioned in the middle of our frames. And so when we do a split screen, it shows us both in the middle of the sp split screen. Uh, on the right hand side, you'll see full frame for vertical video. So when you're doing vertical video, you want to fill the frame up. You don't want to have a huge gap on top or you don't want to have your head get cut off. You want to have a good framing. So just with little things like good lighting and good framing, you can create everyday video that is head and shoulders above everybody else who's using the same tools you have. And speaking of tools, let's talk about good sound. Newer smartphones have fantastic audio. As long as you're in an environment where there's not a whole lot of background noise and it's not super echoey. So if you're in a room that has really high ceilings, all tile, no carpet, no sofas, that's going to be hard to capture good audio. So just move. Like if you have bad lighting, move to a place where you have good lighting. Um, in addition to that, if you want to get a little bit more complicated, you can and broadcast from your phone. Uh, you could use something like the Rode VideoMic Pro. Rode also makes a lav mic that you could use. And then if you're going to broadcast live streaming from your computer, I, I use the Blue Yeti. I'm using the Blue Yeti right now. There's other alternatives, but I'm just going to make it nice and easy for you. I'm going to recommend the Blue Yeti. Don't overthink it. Just start broadcasting. Make sure that you're in a place that has decent acoustics and there's not a lot of background noise. Any additional microphones, that's just a cherry on the top. So good equipment. What does it look like to have good equipment? Well, first and foremost, in the spirit of keeping things simple, your smartphone is one of the best cameras that you're going to be able to gain access to without spending a whole bunch of money. Your smartphone, the front camera, has advanced so far in the last, I don't know, five years that it is a viable option for broadcasting live streaming. If you want to go out and get additional tools and hook them up to your computer, the Logitech C920 is what I like to use. Uh, it's a, it's a um, tried and true webcam. It works with PCs. It works with Macs. So if you want to up your game a little bit and broadcast from your computer, get the Logitech C920. And if you really want to up your game, and this makes things a little bit more complicated, which I really like to keep things simple, but if you do want to up your game, you can use what's called the Cam Link, and you can use a video capture device like this Micro Four Thirds camera that I have right here. You can use that to send video from an HDMI output into the cam link, the cam link into your computer, and then pull up the cam link as a camera in whatever software you're using. Now, you can see already that it's just getting more complicated when you go down that route. And I'm not saying you can't. I'm just giving you the tools. I want you to know that broadcasting from a smartphone is just as viable today as broadcasting using a cam link and a micro four thirds video with an awesome lens. The idea here is to start broadcasting, remove barriers, start broadcasting, start getting your content, start getting your message, your announcements, your show, whatever it is you need to put out in front of your congregation, start getting that in front of them and stop complicating it. So now that we've talked about the differences between pro video and everyday video, and I've given you tools that you can use to become a pro at everyday video. How do we apply those? What types of streams can we do? Well, there's an endless amount of streams that you could actually, you know, produce. I'm just going to give you a few suggestions. Uh, back when I was doing Periscope, uh, you know, at the very beginning, 
everyone was like, you can add this microphone to get better audio and you can tap your Periscope cell phone, your Periscope app on your cell phone into this camera and you can improve the quality and here's how you can tap into all of these extra tools. Here's lighting tools. And what I didn't like about that is it prevented me from just broadcasting. It prevented me from being able to just put my content out there. There's a place for upscaling. There's a place for improving, but you'll find that the easiest way to broadcast on any of these types of live streams is to just do it. So the types of everyday live streams that you can do, first and foremost, gatherings on Sunday morning, but that's not what we're talking about. Gatherings on a Wednesday night, that's not what we're talking about. Every church is pretty much doing that. And if your church isn't, don't feel bad. It's pretty easy to do. You can use some of the tools that I'm demonstrating in this presentation to actually make it happen for your church. But that said, we're not talking about gatherings. What about leader interviews? That's a great opportunity to ask specific questions of your leader, to get your leader to talk from their heart about whatever the topic is. And it's a great tool, especially if you're having a hard time getting that vision from your leader in an email or getting that vision from your leader in some sort of a quick meeting. If you want to get your leader to talk about something that you're trying to communicate on their behalf, say, hey, pastor, hey, leader, could we do a Facebook live broadcast? Put this on our Facebook page and just I could just ask you questions. No prep work on your part. I'm just going to ask you questions and as you have the answers, answer them. There's no better way to get the information you need than just asking your leader and letting them talk. Having a few strategic questions and asking your leader talk. So that's leader interviews. What about a regular show? It's appointment viewing. It's like a show on television, although that's changed a whole lot. There's still some network shows like Timeless, right? For me and my wife, we love Timeless. NBC has not renewed it as of this recording. So you can be in prayer for that, that NBC will renew Timeless and bring it back for a third season. But appointment viewing, it's something that your viewers put on their calendar and say, every single week, I'm gonna show up at this place at this time for this show. Now, a few mo moments ago, I talked to you about Ask Steve, the recording all about mules and donkeys. I'll tell you folks, I know more about mules and donkeys than I ever thought I would ever know about equine, period. I can tell you just about anything you need to get your mule or donkey listening. Well, the live stream that we do with Steve from Queen Valley Mule Ranch is every week on Tuesdays. And every week, if we don't have the invitation out there as quickly as we did the week before, Steve starts getting emails and text messages asking are you gonna be doing your live stream today? It's become appointment viewing for all of his mule and donkey owner viewers. So you can do appointment viewing via a regular show. You have to talk about the same types of things every single week, keep similar formats, but you build an audience who are excited to see it week after week. And then the third type, it's an impromptu. An impromptu is just live stream. Whenever you feel like it, talk about whatever you wanna talk about. It's that simple. Impromptu is probably the easiest way for you to just start broadcasting today. Use your cell phone, broadcast about what you need to have in front of the church and go from there. This is an impromptu live stream. And so um, I was doing a live stream. I sent a message to Carlos, one of the guys who works for me, and he popped in. We just talked a little bit about what we had been working on over the last several days. And it was a great live stream, an opportunity for us to share with our audience information that's most relevant to them. So the only thing uh, consistent about this impromptu, and I wanna highlight this, is that it's completely inconsistent. So you do what you want, when you wanna do it, how you wanna do it. And I do need to say that you can't expect great engagement or interaction on an impromptu broadcast. What you can expect is if the content is fairly good, you can expect that it'll have a good viewership, depending on your page size, a good viewership over the course of the next 24 hours, especially if you don't really do them all that frequently. People will be like, oh, hey, I know this person from my church. What are they talking about? They'll watch it. So those are the three types of live stream events that I'm recommending for you to try out. Now that you've kind of got an idea of what every, being a pro at everyday video looks like, now that you've got a few suggestions on actually you know, live stream event formats that you can do, what does it look like to combine those things together? What does successful live streaming look like? So I'm gonna give you a few, a few tips here. The first one is 
if you're going to start broadcasting on behalf of your church or you're going to enlist somebody to broadcast on behalf of your church, there needs to be an element of self-awareness. You need to make sure that you are there for the viewer. You need to make sure that you're not there for yourself. You want to make sure that you are entertaining. Believe that you are not interesting on your own. Just by clicking launch doesn't mean that you're going to be interesting doesn't mean that people are going to be excited about what they're about to watch. You need to believe that effort is required on your part, that you have to carry the conversation. Be willing to have people tell you how you can improve on what you've done. So do your first broadcast. Ask a couple people who you trust. Hey, is, is this good? How can I improve on this? How can I make it better? Uh, not everyone is going to be good at live streaming. And so you need to be aware enough to say, you know what? This just isn't a fit for me. I need to have somebody else come in and do this. If you're going to ask somebody else to do it, set up the conversation. Hey, we're going to just going to try this out for three times. Um, or we're just going to try this out once or twice because if they're not a fit, you want, you want to get them off live stream and you don't want to have an awkward conversation. So you just need to have enough self-awareness to know if live streaming is going to be a fit for you. The next thing is you need to be consistent. So if you're going to do anything other than an impromptu live stream, you need to be consistent. Show up at the same time, show up with themed content, so a show, and don't change the format. Um, you can have other shows if you want to have a different type of format, but if you're really going to capitalize on the benefit of consistency, you want to keep the same format from show to show to show to show. So if you're answering questions, keep answering questions. If it's interviewing a different leader from the church, keep interviewing different leaders from the church. Keep that format the same so that you can benefit from consistency. Um, the next thing is to be prepared. Don't show up with nothing to talk about. Know what you want to say before you actually say anything at all. The worst thing is to start broadcasting and just start, you know, picking at your hair or just kind of like, hey guys, things like that. Like that's not entertaining. You're not doing you or your church any favors at that point. Know what you want to say and what a successful broadcast looks like before you hit start. So tools for live streaming. I want to talk very quickly about the platforms, the software, and the hardware. We've already hit on the hardware a little bit, um, but the platforms and the software are important. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of different options that you could choose, options that you could use, but that doesn't mean you need to. Keep it simple. Keep it easy. Keep it, and this is the word right here, accessible so that you don't feel like you have to do this giant production. Maybe down the road you'll work, you'll work yourself into a production mode, but for right now, just keep it approachable so that at any point in time you can launch your broadcast and once you're done, move on, right? Maybe 30 minutes of prep time, launch your broadcast, move on. After 90 minutes, you've produced that week's content. So the platforms that you can use, there are many others than these, but these are kind of the main ones. And first and foremost, I recommend Facebook for everyone. And again, your audience is on Facebook. You might say, oh, my church isn't there. Yeah, your church members are there. You probably just haven't given them a reason to follow your Facebook page yet, but your members are on Facebook. Periscope is another one. Periscope is great for individual interaction. You can broadcast um, using you know different software tools. You can broadcast interviews, but Periscope is great for just selfie videos. YouTube's been doing live streaming for a long time. You don't have many, as many people quickly engage, but it's quickly becoming a more engaging platform. YouTube is not a social network, has lots of social elements, and they're building more and more social elements in. So keep your eyes on YouTube. And then the last one is live stream. Live stream is traditionally for more produced events, and many churches are probably using live stream right now, but that's another option. The hardware that you want to be looking at using, first and foremost, your smartphone. Guys, smartphones are so advanced now. They're so powerful. They can do everything that you need. As long as you have good framing, good lighting, and good audio, your smartphone is a fantastic live streaming device. Don't overthink it, okay? So you could use a Logitech C920 like I've already mentioned. You can do, use the cam link with a connected camera. Again, that gets a little bit more complicated. And then whatever USB mic you want to use. Again, I use the Blue Yeti, but there are awesome alternatives out there to the Blue Yeti. Software. This is one that I really want you to pay attention to, especially the application. So first and foremost, using the Facebook app, you can broadcast to a profile and broadcast to a group. 
using the Facebook Pages app, you can broadcast to any page. You can broadcast live. Periscope app allows you to broadcast, right, to Periscope. And then the YouTube app allows you to broadcast to YouTube. And depending on what pages you're connected to and a manager of, you can select different pages from within there to broadcast directly to that page. You can all also broadcast from a webcam using the browser extension that Facebook has built in. So I use the Chrome browser. If you go to Facebook, if you get ready to launch a live broadcast, you can actually dial in your um, webcam. Now, when we're talking about applications, this is if you're going to broadcast from your computer to any broadcast platform for the most part and you're not going to use the Facebook browser. The one that I use and I recommend because it's the easiest is the eCam Live application. It's by the eCam people and they do a great job with all of their applications. They're regularly updated. They're regularly improved upon. So eCam Live is a great tool for you to have access to. The next one is Just Broadcaster for Facebook and there's also Just Broadcaster for YouTube. This one's a very stripped down version of Ecamm Live, a stripped down version of basically any production live stream software out there. It doesn't rely on Skype where Ecamm Live relies on Skype for interviews. Just Broadcaster, you can use their built-in tool. I found it unreliable, but if you can get it to work, it eliminates you needing to use Skype. The other two tools are really going to make it a lot less accessible for you to live stream, but I need to mention them. First, OBS Studio. It's an open broadcast system studio, and it allows you to use a complete professional broadcasting software. I really don't recommend that unless you're a techie and you really want to get into the production side. And then the last one, which some churches already have, is Wirecast. This one is the most advanced. This is the one that is kind of the big daddy that all of the, the main broadcasters use, shy of true professional broadcasting. Wirecast is a great system, but it is complicated. It takes time to learn how to use, and it's expensive. So if I'm going to tell you to start with one thing, I say start with Ecamm Live. That will get you broadcasting within just a few minutes. It's a small download. It's very inexpensive and it's a great piece of software. The last thing that I want to talk about is ideas for streaming. So now that you know how to be a pro at everyday video, now you know what hardware and software to use, what type of show should you launch? We've talked about the different types. So what type of show should you launch and what should that content be? I'm going to give you some suggestions. Do whatever you want to do. Develop them out however you want to develop them out. But these suggestions will help you get going. First and foremost, I love the idea of a weekly student ministry update show. One of the things that parents love is information about what's going on with their kids. If you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not a parent yet, trust me, parents want to know what their kids are learning. Parents want to know what their kids are hearing. If you do a weekly children's or a weekly student ministry live stream show, and you probably want to do it after hours in order to get parents who are home from work to be able to watch and engage live, you can have direct access to your parents and let them know exactly what's going on. You want to talk about vision casting and helping parents understand why certain things are important? Do a live stream event. You want to talk about getting parents to value the work that you and your leaders are investing in? Live streaming. It's another opportunity to get FaceTime with a parent on a broad scale. And the cool thing about it is it doesn't feel like all the parents gathered in a room. It feels like you're talking to the parent just like I'm talking to you right now. So weekly ministry update shows, student ministry I think is a great candidate to do this. The next type of everyday live stream that you could take a look at would be regular prayer meetings. Now, they say if, if something's important, give it real estate. If something's important, give it time. Prayer, often what happens is it's, it's forgotten in a lot of our church. If your church is doing great with prayer, awesome. But it's something that's forgotten in many, many churches. We say we value it, but we don't give it face time. What about live streaming a weekly or a monthly prayer event led by one of your leaders, led by your senior pastor even? If that's something that they want to put an emphasis on, do it. What would it look like for you to say every single week, hey, we want to bring prayer points to you. You don't need to come to the church and sit in the room and have it be awkward and feel like you have to pray out loud. We're going to make it accessible to you. We're going to lead you through right here and right now how to pray for the church. We're going to take stop. We're going to stop. We're going to allow you to pray. And then we're going to pick back up in. 
weekly or monthly prayer events online is a great way to not only affirm a spiritual practice that is often forgotten and often overlooked, but it's a great way for you to engage your people and help them see the value of that practice. Another one is a what is video. And I love what is videos because it allows us to talk about something that we often take for granted as Christians. We think that everybody knows what baptism is about. Everybody knows what parent-child dedication is about when the reality is a lot of people who we would even say no, they don't. They couldn't articulate it. So let's say you do weekly or monthly baptisms. If you do weekly baptisms, more power to you. Let's say you do monthly baptisms. What you could do is on Saturday before the Sunday baptism or the day before whatever your service is, do a live stream event. Talk to one of your pastors. Say, can we just talk a little bit about the value of baptism? Or maybe you do it uh, once every six months and you replay that broadcast back. But the idea here is to actually give more time to what baptism is, to cast vision so your people understand it. Because on Sunday morning or during your service, whenever it happens, it's going to be hard to give 15, 20 minutes to talking about baptism. So use live streaming to educate people to make for more impactful Sunday morning events. Parent-child dedication, same thing. You want to explain why Easter is so important or what Easter really means beyond what's going to be said on Sunday? Live stream it. And lastly, what about membership? If your church does membership, guys, commitment is on an all-time low. People are looking to not be committed to anything. So church membership isn't exactly the most sexy thing you can talk about, but there are values to it. There is merit to it. Talk about it on a live stream and paint a vision of church membership that gets people to say, you know what? I understand it. I want to be a part of this beyond what role I've been playing thus far. Uh, event explainer live streams. So if you have a camp coming up or if you have a, um, a special all church event coming up outside of the regulars, do an event explainer and make that the featured video on your website. Uh, teaching new songs. So if your worship team does a great job of acoustic sets, Teach new songs. A lot of churches have done this. I think they've done a great job. Maybe enlist the services of your audio tech person to have them help you come up with a great sound so that it sounds really, really good when you're producing the live stream. Um, and then a weekly rundown. I really like this one as communicators. A weekly rundown of what is in the program or what is in your newsletter. So what could that last one look like? Well, that's what I want to show you right now. So let's just say every Thursday you finish your program. So this is Foothills Baptist Church right here. This is a church out here in Arizona where I live. And you can see there are two things in addition to the welcome and in addition to the worship order. There's a transformational event for kids and a parent's commitment. So what would it look like for us to do a rundown? Well, it could look something like this. Hey everybody, welcome to this Thursday edition of Communication at Foothills Baptist Church. My name's Dave, and I'm just gonna take a few moments to go through this week's program with you. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you use the comments section. Some of our staff will be watching, but when you show up at, on Sunday this week, here's what you're gonna find in the program. First and foremost, you see, you'll see a transformational event for kids. What is this event that we're talking about? Well, it's Discipleship Now. It is an in-hope discipleship evangelism training program. We we have done this program over the last several years and the stories that have emerged of life change from the kids who have participated, well, those stories are what are is what is compelling us to continue to do D Now every single year. Uh, it's going to be um, for set grades uh, two through five. So if you have a child currently in grades two through five, listen up because this is for you. The dates are February 16th and 17th. It's going to be run by our children's ministry minister, Jeannie Nation, and it's uh, absolutely free. So if you're interested in discipleship now, or if you know someone who is, uh, make sure to reach out or tag that person below. The second thing that we're going to talk about is a parent's commitment. What is parent's commitment? Well, it's parent-child dedication. Now, a lot of us don't know what parent-child dedication is, or at least we think we know, but we have a misconception. At our church, what parent-child dedication actually means is it is the parent committing to raising the child to know Jesus in a home that trusts Jesus, in an environment that looks to Jesus first. It's not any type of mystical, magical thing where the child is dedicated and now they're closer to God. But what it is, is it is the parent saying, we are committed to raising this child so they can know God and grow closer 
in a relationship with Christ. So that's what's happening this Sunday. That's what you're going to find in our program this week. If you have any questions, again, leave those in the comment section or reach out to us, info at ourchurch.com. Would love to reach out, would love to connect back with you. Thank you so much. We'll see you on Sunday. That's what that could look like. That simple. So hopefully you've got a few ideas here of ways that you can begin implementing everyday live streams tomorrow. Now, one thing I do want to point out is you've heard me make mistakes here. You've heard me flub over my words. You don't have to be perfect. I flub over my words all the time. And I heard a professional actor talking at, at one point in time saying, if you messed up with your words while talking to somebody in a coffee shop, what would you do? Would you stop? Would you go back and say, let me try that again? No, you would recover. You would gather yourself and you just start talking again. It's human to make mistakes. It's human to mix up our words. It's human to step over ourselves. Just recover and move on. Don't feel like you have to be perfect. That's one of the things that I love about everyday video. You see professional video, you've got to be perfect. Um, there's a lot of people who I know, a lot of my friends who are fantastic at professional video, but it takes so much time because you have to be perfect or else you fall short or else it looks funny, or else it looks weird, or else it kind of looks wannabe-ish. With everyday video, it doesn't matter how many mistakes you make as long as you're prepared, you're self-aware, you're concise, you're ready to go, right? So, you can do it. Just start streaming. Keep your expectations low. Don't go out and start telling everybody that you're live streaming. Broadcast to one person, two people, three people. Get used to it. Don't set a platform where you're going to fail in front of 50, 60, 70 people. Um, give yourself time to get acclimated to live streaming. No matter how popular FaceTime is, no matter how popular video conferencing calls is, holding a phone out like this is still awkward and it takes time to get used to. Don't overthink anything. And lastly, be willing to fail. Know that you're going to fail. It's okay to fail because failure just takes you one step closer to that next success. So, live streaming for a church. You can do it. You have the tools. You have the format. You have everything that you need. Hopefully, you've taken great notes during this session. Get started. Don't wait don't think that things have to be perfect. Just start broadcasting. And if all else fails and you need a little bit of input, feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on Twitter at Dave Shrine. Uh, my business website, www.shrinemedia.com. We work with churches. We spend lots of time, time investing in churches, helping them with their communication strategy, helping them incorporate live streaming into how they are moving their ministry forward. And it would be a privilege to do whatever I can to help you do the same. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your attention. And here's to an awesome remainder of the summit.